So you guys talked a lot about the whole isolation, alienation aspect and the loneliness. I guess this begs a question, what do people need to be happy? Like does modern life and our modern society support those needs or work against them? Like, what do we need to be happy? And can the life, can our world around us actually give us the things that we actually need? Gabriel, go ahead. Um, I was gonna say what people need to be happy, what they're lacking of nowadays is leisure time. Okay. A lot of time to themselves to relax. Um, and today, not many people get that. They just work every day. They just work to live or no live to work. And they work constantly, hours. They don't get any time to themselves. Sort of like Gregor, how he has to work all the time to support his family. Mm -hmm. That's it. He doesn't get any me time. So even before he was a cockroach, he was still not a happy guy. Um, I mean, do you feel like you get leisure time? I think so. OK, so would you do your leisure time? Bed. OK. Play my games. OK. Actually, what are you playing? What are you playing right now? Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft? Oh, okay. I thought like I'm looking for new PS4 games. Yeah. Um, but no, like I think that's something I can really relate. To. I think that's something that's really true. Like we don't have enough time to lay down. Like like for instance, when you said like you just lay down in your bed, there's that instant reaction of me like you just laying down in your bed. But like you should lay down in your bed. What else should you be doing? Look at Ivan. I was gonna say like a different approach. I feel like what people need to be happy is like a distraction. Because if you really sit there and think about it, like for a while, you start to think about life, it's like, it gets kind of depressing because it's like, wait a minute, like doing a lot of this for nothing. So a lot of the times people just do things to like distract themselves from the fact that anything they do really won't matter. And I feel like that's when people say like, oh, you got to find a job that you actually like. But it's like all this is just a distraction, like to make you forget from the, the inevitable that's coming. And it's like, I don't like, and I feel like society does support those needs because, I mean, look at all the streaming services, right? It's like they just put it all out there. You just buy it like every month or so, and then you have like access to a bunch of shows, and then people just binge them all night. They just get distracted from things. I have to ask a question. Yeah. Did you think this way before we started talking about existentialism in class? I mean, or was it just honestly, like after you brought it up, I started really thinking about it, and I got kind of scared. I was like, wait a minute, like, I don't, I don't like that at all. <laughs> it's like, ooh, like so whenever I'm doing something that distracts me, I'm like, wait a minute. I gotta, you know, I gotta remember, like, what am I doing here? It's scary, man. <laughs> Life is scary, oh. that's a tagline. Um, Anastasia, what do you feel like you need to be happy? Just, just to, like, surround your pe yourself with people. Okay. That lift you up, kind of, it'll make you feel better instead of having friends that make you feel bad about yourself. Okay, so you think, like, listen, what people need to be, po like, is positive people. Do you think, like, I don't know, do you think modern society, modern life is producing positive people? It's very hard to find positive people nowadays. Okay. In, in my opinion, yeah. Okay. Why do you think that is? Because I feel like it's mostly, I don't know, I feel like people try to follow other people. Okay. And yeah, people are just not happy nowadays. <laughs> I agree. You agree? Yeah. Why do you think you have a reason why people are miserable these days? Uh, no, not really. There's a lot of reasons why people are miserable. There are some people that are just not happy with themselves or like just not happy in general. And there's some people that are happy but want to change that and there's some that are happy and don't want to change it. So I feel like those type of people bring down other people to try to help make themselves feel better, but it just but I do think peace is part of making someone happy, like having their own peace. Okay. All right. Um Emily, you want to get the last word on this one? I don't know. There's a lot of things that could make a lot of people happy. It's always little things okay. that can make a lot of people happy. Um, but modern society right now, I don't know. It's kind of messy. When you talk about it, you get into it. it is messy. <laughs> no, modern society is not doing great right now. We're just not doing great right now. We're not. But eventually, in 2033, maybe we do get this thing right. Season maybe. Three? No, absolutely not. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as I've said, I don't think we ever get this thing right. And that's why I've always told you guys, I don't think I'm gonna die just because I just think the thing will get worse once I left. I just think I'm the last thing holding this whole earth together. <laughs> I'm the last, I'm just the last person. 
All right. Um, I do want to ask this other question here for us to segue. Is it possible to be fully to be a fully independent individual in a family unit that depends on you? No. no. Say that a little louder, Anastasia. No. <laughs> no. Why not? Um, I say no because if a family depends on you, you're mostly focused on them, making okay. sure they're okay instead of having your own time to yourself. Okay. To like regroup with yourself to make sure you're good. Okay. I think most of us would agree with that. Um, I don't know, like, do you guys think Gregor was able to be this independent individual in this family that depended on him? Definitely not. Definitely not? Why not? Because he was focused on, he made paying his, the, his family's debt his responsibility, his priority. Okay. He, he didn't have any time for himself at all. Even with some money that he saved for himself, he still didn't have time for himself. Yeah, it kind of goes back to the whole Gabriel thing of like, you know, you're working to actually live. And I don't, well, I guess like it, it would naturally segue into this question, which is kind of the same thing. I mean, even as a roach now, is Gregor more or less independent than he was before? No. No, why not? He keeps his family in mind and that, that's what bothers me about Gregor. Like, honestly, I like that he's very, that he cares for his family, but he cares for them a little bit too much to the point where there's, he's breaking their own limits. Okay. And I'm saying this in a way where he keeps them in mind and he's just like, oh, what a nice, like, he's thinking about what a quiet family this is and how he thinks about the money and the financial problems that they go through. And he just keeps them in mind. Like, he should be, honestly, paying attention to himself. It sounds a little selfish, but I mean, the man's a power roach. <laughs> what is? I feel like he deserves it though. Yeah, like, it, he made it his responsibility to make sure his family was good. So I feel like he deserves to treat himself, make sure he's okay mentally, physically, all of that. Is it? So I, I guess like, so I guess here's the question I have is, is it possible to have like a really healthy relationship with family? Because I feel like family itself, maybe just my own personal view, right? Yes and no. Like, yes and no. I feel like it's a very difficult thing. Like, we don't hate to admit it, but it's like a very difficult line to thread. Is it like a difficult needle to thread to have like a really healthy relationship with your family where someone's not getting exploited here? Yeah, I mean, I don't think so at all. Because it's like, once you start doing things for everybody, and it's like, they just assume half the time, like, all right, I'm going to need you to do this and this. But it's like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Like, I got things to do. But they're like, nah, you got this to do now. And it's like, I hate that because it's like, I, you know, I have my own life, right? Everybody has their own lives. But then it's like, out of nowhere, you gotta take care of this. And it's just, it, that doesn't make sense. Like, what? Like, <laughs> Cause it feels like at every stage of it, someone's getting exploited, right? Like when you're younger, you take up all of your mom's time or your dad's time, you know, shout out to the dads for doing it. But like someone, some parents getting exploited here. And then when it gets like older, then your parents are just kind of like, well, we need you to do this, to spread it around. And it just seems like it's just constantly going this way. It's just, it's just a difficult needle to thread. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the chaff, chapter two. Here is my question for you guys. We've spent the last chapter talking about Gregor. Now we're talking about his family. What do you guys think is unusual about their reactions? What was unsurprising? Okay, I mean, All right. start off. I think what was unsurprising was the whole mom thing where once Gregor's dad started attacking uh, Gregor, mm -hmm. you know, she came over and started strangling like their dad. I, thought, I, I didn't find that that surprising because at the end of the day, Gregor is her child and she probably has unconditional love for him, right? So it's like when, once she saw him getting like, you know, tagged, she had to like react, you know? I didn't really find that surprising. But apparently a lot of people did, which is kind of weird, but I mean, it's each their own, I guess. I don't know. Did you guys find that surprising that she was willing to, like, you know, throw her life in the middle to defend Gregor? I mean, he did faint, but it doesn't make any difference. He is her son. Yeah. Would you guys react the same way? No. Okay. No. Um, it's a roach. I have to be in this situation, but probably not, because I don't like them just. <laughs> it's as simple as you don't like roaches. I don't know what I would do either. Like, actually, I think that's like actually a really fair answer. Because I do think most things are just like, I would not know what to do. Because if my child turned into a giant cockroach, I would just kind of be like, that is not my child. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I really I don't know scared, what to do. But I, I don't know what to do. I 
I, I'd be ter- I'd, I'd be like really ter- I'd be like really terrified. Yeah. I do think that's like a really fair thing. I'd be like and super it's terrified. Bigger than me, I'm gonna be scared. Like, yeah, All right, so let's hit a couple quick hitters here, so I can get you guys home. Um, how does the life? I mean, how do you think the family's life changes? And in some ways, what? How has it remained the same? Um, I think their life changed because now they can't be dependent on Gregor. They're they're gonna they're financially stuck again. And <laughs> at this point, I think they just they don't they think they'll just be in debt for. Because Gregor can't work. He's a cockroach. So. I do want to pause and hit on one thing. What did we find out that actually that the dad actually revealed when Gregor, what Gregor overheard actually? Is it oh. you the one that's working now? Like the no, dad? didn't he have like money stashed? Say that louder. He had money stashed. Yeah, he had money stashed. Wasn't that like super just messed up? Yeah. Gregor was like working himself like in the mud in this entire time his dad had like some money stashed. That's how it be. That's how it be. It's always family. It's always family. It's always family. All right, I do want to take some time to talk about Gret. I don't know. Is anybody impressed with Gret here? I kind of knew it would be someone within family that would be on his like that wouldn't treat him different. Somebody. But it's always the sister, right? It's always the daughter. It's always the daughter like that like steps up. That's like always the gender role. It's the daughter that like totally steps up. I mean, she's cool. She's, she's cool. I mean, yeah, because I mean, she's still super scared, but like, she recognizes that that's her brother, and she helps him out, even if she's like scared a little bit. But she, she's cool. She's a real one. Right. Yeah. She's a real one. Would it be me? Yeah. <laughs> huh? It wouldn't be me. That would be you. No. That right. wouldn't be you. Okay, that would not be you. No, like, listen. I think it's always good to admit who you are. If you know who you are, I would only be willing to sacrifice so much. Only be willing to sacrifice so much. Or I'd be the family member who did it, but was angry about it the entire time. Which I think is really just most of us, right? Yeah. All right, so I want to leave us with one more thing, because I did say I would get you guys out here before 3 o'clock. How does the metamorphosis illustrate the following quote? The more you do for someone, the more that someone takes you for granted. Let's go around, Anastasia, let's go for you. How do you think the metamorphosis illustrates the following quote? The more you do for someone, the more that someone takes you for granted. Because he's doing a lot for his family, so I feel like they see, like, they can take advantage of him to get money and use him for money just because he's the only one working and taking care of the family while everyone's just home doing nothing. Okay. Um, Emily, what do you think? Um, I feel like this quote speaks very badly to lots of things. It goes regards to almost anything else I could say. Um, but in the metamorphosis, I feel like it goes for how even if Gregor's a cockroach, they still didn't really, I don't know, I feel like they didn't really recognize him for him, like him for a son instead of being a moneymaker and being the only guy, well, being the only person bringing the quote, quote, baby home. Um, but yeah, I just feel like, you know, they took one night for granted and that's kind of messed up. All right, Gabe, Gabriel, go ahead. I think it speaks for a show. Um, Gregor did uh, waste a lot of his time just working for his family, even though his dad had a huge stash of money left on the family. And now that he's a couple of he can't work, his parents don't care about him. He just threw it to the side, like trash. All right, Ivan, go ahead. Oh yeah, like, kind of like what Gabriel said, they kind of just threw him to the side. Whereas like Gregor, like he just changed a little bit, like pretty much got like a haircut or something. All of a sudden they're like, oh no, we don't know who you are, get away, right? And it's like, it's messed up because he did so much with him for so long and now it's just like, yeah, we don't want to be with you anymore. And it's like, that's, that's really messed up. Are you comparing becoming a bug to like getting a haircut? <laughs> He looks a little different. Like, just, a li- just a little different. Just yeah. a little different. He's still the same. Just a little, just, he's, just, he's the same. Right, right. All right, go ahead. I agree with everyone. It's like the more you do for someone, the less you get in, in return. Like with Gregor, he's done everything for his family, even trying to handle financial problems for them. Mm-hmm. And they just they didn't give him nothing in return to thank him for anything and for everything he's done. All right. 
All right, guys, that is us for this week. That was the first episode of the Blank Podcast that is yet to be named. Next time, we will continue our discussion of the metamorphosis with an analysis of the second half of the novel and a discussion about Franz Kafka's Letters to His Father. Thanks for joining us.